is for serious people. Church is for those who are on the Lord's side. And if you are going to be lazy and just use your money as a proxy for your devotion and dedication, then we have a problem. Let's take Moses and Joshua. We find that before they started out their ministry, they had an encounter with God. And here we hear that Joshua met the commander. The trouble is today, you find a man or a woman of God who has had an encounter with God, who's had an experience of God, who now re um, write books about their encounter with the Lord, and the rest of us read their books and try to imbibe their experience secondhand. Um, when Elijah went to heaven in a chariot, his mantle fell, and Elijah took the mantle of Elijah and said, as he struck the river Jordan, where be the God of Elijah? The reason is Elijah never had an encounter personally. He didn't ask God for a power from on high. What he asked God for was to inherit a double portion of Elijah's anointing. He did not seek God for himself. That's why his life was limited to only achieving double what Elijah accomplished. And then at the end of the day, when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration, the only people that met him were people who had met with God, Moses and Elijah. So, do you want a double portion of somebody else's anointing? You will be useful. You will do miracles. But you will not be on the record. Somebody phoned me the other day. And I said, brother, because sometimes I speak very, very directly. May God have mercy on me. I said, brother, who sold you my phone number? How did you, because he's not a member of our church. How did you find my number? To cut a long story short, I'm going to meet the brother soon. He's coming to my house. What do you mean, amen? <laughs> He's coming to my house soon because he wants to be mentored. He's a pastor from another ministry, but he's been watching me over the years, and he found a way to worm his way into my heart. Now, how did our conversation on the telephone end up in me asking him to come and visit me? Somebody I've known of him for some time. The reason was, I was in a meeting like this, and he came. When he came, he came forward after the meeting to introduce himself to me. So I saw him face to face, and he told me some nice things which made my head not to fit my cap anymore. <laughs> 
So now when he phoned, because I didn't give him email or phone number, but he could tell somebody in the meeting that I've spoken to Brother Paul and that was a leverage for him to get my number. But when, what I'm getting at is when he phoned, he could relate back to when we met. So when you pray, it's easier to get what you want from the Lord if God and you remember the last time you met. If you are speaking to a stranger, even you will not be very fluent, you'll not be very comfortable, you'll be there, uh, well, and then well again, and then you see, um, you don't know me, okay, I don't know you, and I'm not very keen to know you, because I have already many people I know. I have so many children inside, I have no room for children outside. Ah, but Brother Paul, remember we met. Where did we meet? And then when he told me where we met, and I remember the pleasure I had when he told me many, many nice things. <laughs> Sometimes people who are familiar with you assume that you know they like you. But other people who are not so familiar, when they eulogize you, when they appreciate you, when you tell them, when they tell you many, many nice things, even things you don't have, you will give them. So by the time Joshua, by the time Joshua was going to raise his rod toward AI, and they had total victory, he could remember he has met with the commander. He was not just doing, that, doing it as a gimmick. He wasn't doing it toward AI because he remembered that Moses did it and it worked when the Amalekites came to attack Israel. He wasn't copying somebody else's style and success. He had his own encounter. Moses met the Lord in the burning bush. He met the Lord after they crossed the River Jordan an encounter and you can't meet the Lord in meetings usually when God meets with you he meets you with you when he gets you on your own the Bible says that when Jacob was going to uh, be met by his brother Esau he told all his families he divided them into groups and he told them to go ahead and he remained by the river Jabuk alone. Whenever God can get you alone, he will visit you. Hello? The who said I? <laughs> I've told you at least put sir after I. <laughs> now, are you listening to me? What God, I, I don't mean you never say, stay alone in your room to pray. But what I'm talking about is not being alone in your room, but alone in yourself. Usually when we come before the Lord, we'll come with something. We are preparing the Lord, and when the Lord has given us his listening ears, then we bring out the real issue. Somebody came to visit me. For two hours we talked about everything under the sun. And when I thought I've had enough, are you going home now? He said, eh, well, really, and the reason I came. After two hours? <laughs> the reason you came, you couldn't tell me after 15 minutes? And the person said, in an African culture, you don't approach a, uh, 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 an older man without, first of all, throwing cold water on the floor. So you, you've made all my carpet wet. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Oh, Lord, I give you my heart. 
and God says, okay, come to the point. All you are doing in praising me is to make me feel good. Really, you haven't come to praise me. You have come to praise me so I can attend to your need. But when the day comes and you say, Father, nothing in my hand I bring, only to thy cross I cling, O Lamb of God, I come. Oh, I have problems, but I will shelve them. I have questions, but I will abandon them. Father, thy face I seek. I'm not seeking my, your face for anything. Remember, God made you, and when he made you, he had something in mind. He didn't have something in mind that is only going to be there for your destiny. So when the Joshua now says, with, he saw the commander with the uh, sword of God in his hand, and Joshua said, are you for us or for our adversary? And the, and the commander says, neither. I'm here for God, not for you or your enemy. And the equation we, not have, we have not yet uh, um, um, uh, discovered is God knows what is good. Did you hear me? Yes, God knows what is good. But if you think you know better, he'll listen. That's why he wrote in the scriptures, as um, I will mention some of it tomorrow, there, there are things God writes in the scriptures for um, ordinary level and advanced level Christians. Ordinary level Christians, he will give you uh, milk. Advanced level, he will give you meat. Ordinary level, he will tell you what you need. Advanced level, he will tell you what he needs. So it's all there in the scriptures. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord your God. And he will do what? He will give you the desire of your heart. That is ordinary level. Okay, if you think you know what is good for you, tell me what is the desire of your heart. But when you go to advanced level, you will be like Solomon when God appeared to him in a dream and says, Solomon, what do you want? He says, I want nothing except wisdom to do what you've sent me to do properly. And then God says, because you didn't ask, I will give you what I know you really need. If you give God chance to prove that he knows you better than you know yourself, and he knows your end better than you know your own end, you'll be a better person than anything. I love it. <coughs> I love it when I'm on a plane. Uh, where was I going? Yes, I was in... I was in uh, Ibadan, um, no, Ibadan. I was, <laughs> what's funny? <laughs> so I was in Ibadan and um, we were flying to Abuja. And um, um, one of our members was also on the plane. Well, two or three of our members, but two went on another plane, and one actually traveled with my wife and I on the same flight. And the person said to me at check-in, I'm going to enjoy this flight. I don't need to pray because Brother Paul is on the plane. <laughs> um, if, if your life is in God's hands and God has invested a lot in you, you can relax because you know your time is in his hand. Whatever he wants, he can do. Be anxious for nothing. 
but by prayer and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God knows everything. But when you know God is in control of your life, it will determine what you ask for. If you begin to ask for things that will give God the privilege of knowing you are on his side, he will make sure you never lack any good thing. That's the way I know the Lord is. So we need to get to know the Lord for ourselves. And you can't do that in meetings. You can come to the front all you like. It doesn't come by laying of hands. If I lay hands on you, all you will get at most is a double portion of my anointing. And God help you if you have a double portion of my anointing because you will be giving people hands all over the place. You'll, you'll be, hey, you, why are you laughing? Imagine if somebody comes and is twice as bad as I am. <laughs> now you need your own anointing. What you do need is to find a way to seek the Lord. Try it. You see how hard it is to find God. It's, it's not on Google. Tom Tom will not help you. There is nothing. You can read all the books you like. You will need to find God for yourself. <laughs> yes. For your, there is no easy way. And there is no shortcut. How do you know God? How do I find God? I can't tell you. I know how I knew him and how I found him. You must find out for yourself because we have different background and different dispositions and different experiences of God. But I know that if you're looking for God, you can't do it on and off. It took me nine months minimum to seek the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, I have met Jesus. I saw him physically in a vision when I got born again. Wonderful. But I also knew I, I needed the power of the Holy Spirit and soon after I got born again, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but I realized I only had gift. I didn't know the giver. The Holy Spirit, I didn't know. The Holy Spirit is very difficult to pin down. The Bible says it's like the wind that blows. You don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know where it's going. The old Holy Spirit is like, 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 like a dove. It's like uh, tongues of fire. Uh, the Bible always likens him to something else because he will appear to you, he will reveal himself to you based on the depth of your capacity to contain him. If you want the Holy Spirit only so you can have power, he will reveal himself to you in that level. But if you say, dear Holy Spirit, I want to know you. I really, really, really want to know you. The first thing the Holy Spirit does in the life of every believer that wants to know him is, the Bible, is what the Bible says, when the Spirit comes, he will do what? He will convict of sin. That's the first thing he does. He will convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You can't know the Holy Spirit and not know the terrible, shall I say, the, the terribleness of sin. God told me, give me a note, bring a note paper. So I brought a note paper. Find a pen. So I found a pen. Stay in your room for three days. So I stayed in my room for three days. God says, write in the paper the word pride. So I wrote the word pride. He says, look at it for three days until you, you're so sorry for being proud, you will cry. So in order to accelerate the process, 
I manufacture tears. Woo, 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 woo. I didn't know I was proud. Because comparing myself with my fellow ministers, I thought I was humble. But when I compare myself to the Almighty God, I knew I was filthily arrogant. God said, look at pride. You are very proud. You are very proud of the fact that you came from a very wealthy family. And that will make you think people who are poor must be lazy. Did you work for your wealth? Did you not inherit it? Did you buy the Cadillac that you used to go to school and the Pontiac that brought you back? Was it not your mother and your father who left you enough money that you could never suffer? And then you see other people and you turn your nose. When I was in Lagos, there was a particular tribe of people who came to empty our toilet. They came once a week. And when they came, all the compound will vanish. The Lord says, if one of those people from that particular tribe that specialize in clearing Lagos cesspool, would you allow them to marry if you had a daughter? Would you allow them to marry your daughter? And you said you are not proud. So as God began to deal with me. I had a very, very graphic test. I've told you this before, but I didn't tell you the context. But it was in the context of God telling me that I was proud. A brother came to speak to me. The brother didn't know he had been endowed with extra supply of saliva. So when the brother spoke, not only did saliva collect around the extreme end of his mouth as white foam, but as he spoke, some of them were doing dancing up and down his, and my stomach was like a cement mixer. <laughs> and sometimes people like that who don't have anybody to tell them they have such a uh, um, surplus, um, <laughs> tend to even come closer. I felt like saying, brother, I've had a shower before I came out. <laughs> so he will be talking, and my stomach will. And God says, you are proud. I says, I'm not proud. He needs help. <laughs> yes, and God says, he may need help but you need more help because of the way you react. He's turning your stomach. The New Covenant Church invites you to worship with us in one of our churches. We have branches throughout Britain and the world. For your nearest church or for further information, telephone 0208 696 7337 or 0207 231 9817. Or write to us at 21 to 29 Pendennis Road, London, SW16 2SS.
The New Covenant Church welcomes you and your family to a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord as we share His Word with you. The Lord says, if one of those people from that particular tribe that specialize in clearing Lagos cesspool, would you allow them to marry if you had a daughter? Would you allow them to marry your daughter? And you said you are not proud. So as God began to deal with me. I had a very, very graphic test. I've told you this before, but I didn't tell you the context. But it was in the context of God telling me that I was proud. A brother came to speak to me. The brother didn't know he had been endowed with extra supply of saliva. So when the brother spoke, not only did saliva collect around the extreme end of his mouth as white foam, but as he spoke, some of them were doing dancing up and down his, and my stomach was like a cement mixer. <laughs> and sometimes people like that who don't have anybody to tell them they have such a uh, um, surplus, um, <laughs> tend to even come closer. I felt like saying, brother, I've had a shower before I came out. <laughs> so he will be talking, and my stomach will. And God says, you are proud. I says, I'm not proud. He needs help. <laughs> yes, and God says, he may need help but you need more help because of the way you react. He's turning your stomach. And unless you get victory over that brother, you will find that he has many relatives around the world. You'll keep meeting them. So one by one, the Holy Spirit will bring certain works of the flesh and say until I feel so sorry that I re I, and I realize it's that particular sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. Sorry enough not to want to be like that again. Don't blame somebody else. Find out why you react in such a way. You know, in the olden days, I'm not saying I have not backslidden. Honestly, I've told you, self cannot be destroyed. You need to constantly, um, you have to regard it um, as dead. But it can easily resurrect every morning. So please don't come and test my sanctification. <laughs> but I'm trying. But 